whenever I get a new goat or whenever I have a new goat that I keep, then I get these records all ready and put together and printed out. Um, each goat binder has enough records for one buck and one doe, but then you get all of the, the, the PDFs so that you can then just print out as many as you want. If I cover all this up to keep the birds out, how will lovely goats stick their heads through to get a snack? Just put it right here, hook the fence here, and then... But then like... they could fly through here. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about it. Yeah? Wait, don't forget about that. I know, I'm gonna have to cover birds. up all those that too. <sighs> but yeah, they won't be able to stick their heads over have anymore. Have a little door, a uh, goat door. <laughs> a goat door? Flip up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So somebody in the comments mentioned that we should get a cat in here. What do you think of that? Do you think a cat would be the solution to keep the birds out? Would that be enough? What if it gets into other stuff? Do you think a cat would? Maybe. What Maybe start licking stuff that it shouldn't get into. Mm, but then also, there would be fresh milk for it every day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can keep, try to catch birds and mice, mm -hmm. and then get fresh milk. Yeah, from these lovely goats. <laughs> okay. Good morning, my friends. I hope you're doing well today. Today I wanted to talk about record keeping systems for goats. So I have been um, in the last months breeding my goats and I tried something different this year. Last year and all the previous years, I put my buck in with all the does at the same time and let them do their thing and figure it all out in their own timing. I would watch for my does to go into heat and then I put them in with the buck until the heat cycle ended and several of my does came back into heat and that has never happened before. So I may re end up regretting doing it this way. I haven't seen them as of yet coming back into heat after the last times uh, that I put them in. So hopefully now that they, they are all bred. But I wanted to show you how I keep my records. Just basically it's record keeping of when they were bred, when they were rebred, when I should dry them up, and when they will be kidding. And those are all really important dates to know because there will be a shift in, in how you care for them nutritionally towards the last of the their pregnancy and also when you will stop milking them because you want to milk them, stop milking them, two months before they have their babies because you want all of that energy to go into their body and, and the kid's body as they're developing. So I'm going to walk you through the system that I use and just show you how I do keep those records for goats, which is really handy. So in the long run, it would be nice to have my does spread out in their keating time so that I could have milk uh, more throughout the year so that we could have them spread out enough that we would actually have milk maybe even year around. Uh, usually by now I have dried them up because it's cold and dark and not fun. But this year honestly we're being spoiled. We have had a very very mild winter and it is showing in the 40s this next week and there's no snow on the ground. There's some ice but it's pretty amazing the weather we've had but I've been following the fog in our area. If you don't do that, at least up here, it's amazing how it works. So when there's fog, 
you mark that on your calendar and three months later there will be moisture so in March there's going to be a lot of moisture here probably in the form of very heavy wet snow <laughs> but we need the moisture so we can't complain about that that's the hard thing it's nice to have this nice weather in the middle of winter but then you also are always thinking man but we need the moisture <laughs> I don't know it's it's the first winter that we have ever had no snow for a while. The other day I mailed off 25 goat binders. Today I'm mailing off 10. If you haven't gotten yours, definitely do so I can get it in the mail for you. So I'd like to know in the comments below, how do you manage your breeding season and your milking, your milking planning for your goats? Do you try to spread them out more or do you get them just bred all at once and, and it happen all at once to get it over with? Let me know, know in the comments what works for you. The first key to your goat records is my goat binder. So once you have this, you have a complete system for your goats to keep track of all the records and all the health and all the information that you need about everything for your goats. So get that. Whenever I get a new goat or whenever I have a new goat that I keep, then I get these records all ready and put together and print it out. Um, each goat binder has enough records for one buck and one doe, but then you get all of the, the, the PDFs so that you can then just print out as many as you want. So I'm going to add my delight here. my delight. Hmm. That's a good picture of her. So truth be told, I actually don't usually have a pen and paper in my back pocket when I'm out here and I haven't been keeping my binder out here just because there's a lot of things that can go wrong, wrong at this point and I don't have a really safe place to put it so there can be birds pooping on it, goats chewing on it, when they're, I've had that where I had it out here on the shelf and one of the goats just reached up and <laughs> started chewing and knocked it over and started eating the paper so <laughs> I don't have it in a safe place right now just a second the buck is acting bucky and I need to go out and see why so because of that usually like when I was putting in my my does I would then record with my phone or take a picture of them doing their their stuff so that was how <laughs> i was recording them when they were coming into heat and when i would put them in with the buck so that may work for you it may not <laughs> so i need to go back here to the beginning lots of pictures here you know delight was the first one that came into heat and i was so excited about that and so we put her in there and she didn't actually take uh, the first time I put her in a second time so I haven't seen her come back into heat and I'm hoping she caught oh, it makes me nervous honestly okay here we go so like you could see this video here is delight on October 29th um, she was wagging her tail and I put her in with the buck so that is what I would document in the records here Man, it's hard to do things with a coat on I'm telling you don't do well with coats. <laughs> okay, goat reproduction. Okay, so here's my goat reproduction page. And it is, here's the heat cycle, buck name, and you can put the bread on, bread again. And if you do, um, check to see if they're pregnant when you dry them off and the due date. So, so she was bred on October 29th but then she was bred again so I need to find that so their heat cycle is approximately 21 ish days and so on November 18th she came in to heat again because she was shown interest you could see here that she was shown interest once again from there now the next important thing is go to a lifeofheritage.com 
and I'll leave the link below. There is a gestation calculator on the page that I'll link in down below in the description. So the breeding date then was November 18th. Uh, 417 is when she will be due, her due date. So I'm going to put her due date right here. So just like that. Now, she is one of my does that isn't in milk. When I bought her, she wasn't in milk. So I don't have to dry her off at a certain time because she's not in milk. But that would be something that if she was, I would write down two months before April 17th, I would write down that date and dry her off on that date. And then the, you know, it also has moved to the kidding stall. So I'll really be watching her that week before and watching for signs as she develops into going into to labor. And that's um, an awesome video you can watch on my channel. And then it talks about, you know, you can write down how many were in the birth. And then there's more paperwork then, you know, that you can write in here. M more detailed information of the breeding date the buck, how many offspring, the sex, and any comments about the birth and pregnancy. And then pregnancy notes, delivery notes, offspring notes, you know, if there was anything that went wrong during the pregnancy, like ketosis or, or some something, uh, a met metabolic symptom, you know, where her health declined rapidly or something um, during that, that you can keep tracks, track of that and write that down so that you don't forget. Don't ever expect your brain to remember everything. And then uh, this is something too that you can keep track of from year to year. The first kidding year that they had was in this year they had this many kids the next year they had this many kids and on and on so you can keep track of all of that and then also just in in here is the the test results so if you have uh, if you're doing tests on your goats you can can write all of that down and the results of those tests if they were sick you can write down see I think this is so important I just had a lady email me, but she said, you just saved my goat from pneumonia. Thank you so much. And so that's something that you can keep track of. You know, my goat got pneumonia and I did this and this and this, and this is the treatment plan and, and the results. So keeping track of all of that is invaluable as you are taking care of your goats and learning from all of this. And so definitely be keeping track. And so that's kind of just an overview of how I go about from start to finish uh, with keeping records for my goats. If all goes as planned and they are pregnant and, and got, got bred, uh, I am getting it so that they are spread out, which is nice because I, I'm wanting to start milking them at intervals so I can have them milk long, for longer periods of time. So. Um, it looks like I'll be drying up a couple in February and a couple in, in March and and then we'll be able to start milking earlier because Faith is the first one that will be kidding so I can start milking her first pretty earlier than the others. Alright so we're getting closer to the end of getting all the dates actually written down in my goat binder. And so we are, are getting pretty close uh, to having this part of the process done. I absolutely love these Clever Fox planners. They are awesome. <laughs> so they have pretty big boxes for each month of the year that you can fill in and write in. And then they also have these wonderful things for monthly reviews and planning and goal setting. And then in the back, you can fill out daily your, your tasks for the day. And you can take notes in the back. And so I think these are absolutely awesome. And um, I've used them for several years now. And now is the time then with all these dates to get them written down in your calendar so that, and then to look at your calendar, <laughs> put, a, put a, a reminder on your phone to look at your calendars so you remember the, to look at the dates so you can be prepared and when, when to watch for <laughs> everything. So I hope that was helpful in just showing you what your goat records can look like and how helpful it is when you're planning your year. There's nothing more disheartening or, or even scary sometimes when you realize that you weren't prepared and things went badly because of that. So you can be prepared. You can have awesome goat records for your goats, for your herds, and for your, your goat herd, and you can be prepared and have this all planned out for your year very easily. So I hope that was helpful for you to see. Thank you so much for watching today. And uh, I just pray and hope that you have a wonderfully blessed day, that you're staying warm, and that you are looking forward to those baby goats coming this spring. Have a great day. We'll see you in that next video.
but first I need to go see. Shadow this whole time has been making buck noises and it's making me nervous. So I need to go see what he's talking about. Let's go look. Did you guys forget I was still here? Yeah, Shadow, you're the one that's bothering me. What are you talking about? <laughs> you're in the way, Delight. Well, I think he was talking to Fiona, but I don't think Fiona was interested. No, he. <laughs> what are you talking about, Shadow? <laughs> One of these yahoos pulled out the the heater in the water, and so it was frozen overnight. But it needed to be cleaned out. We had a huge windstorm the other day and there was leaves just covering the water. So I'm cleaning it out and filling it up again. <laughs> so if they could just learn to leave the water heater in the water, it would help. Yes, adults. Two bolts. One of these paint scrapers is awesome to scrape the bottom of water tanks. So they, they just scratch off the, oh, you know, just the mossy or whatever it is that gets on the bottom. It scrapes it off so nice. 